Hello everyone, my name is Hadalyn Laco and I have been living in Boston for the past three years now. One of the most frequently asked questions I get is how do you find an apartment before moving to Boston? So I figured let's make a video to address that. Before we start this video, I want to do just a very quick shout out to my subscribers. Thank you so much for watching and supporting me throughout these years. I never thought in a million years I would get to a thousand and it is because of you that I am past a thousand now as I look at my subscriber count. So thank you so much. Um, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe as well as check out my Boston Living playlist up above. And without further ado, let's get started. The first thing I want to talk about is location. Research where specifically you're going to go either to school or work. This is important because where you have to go frequently will help you determine what is the best public transportation systems you have available if you're not going to bring a car in advance. And then from there, we're going to move on to the budget. I'm going to be upfront with you. If you do not have at least two grand a month, just for rent, you're not gonna be able to afford a very quality apartment living here in Boston. Boston is fairly expensive and has gone way more so because of inflation. Now keep in mind, this is just 2K for just rent. There are other additional costs to think about, such as like utilities. You know, some places they don't include gas and electric, some places do. Uh, do. There's also water, there's also Wi-Fi. Um, if you have a phone plan, you need that. And I'm sure there's additional things on top of that that I'm forgetting. But overall, that is the cost for living alone. Now, when you are moving into the apartment, they want the following from you. They want your first month's rent, your last month's rent, a security deposit, and depending whether or not you used a broker, a broker's fee, which is typically one month's rent. So just think of all of that in general on top of all of the utilities and whatnot and question whether or not do you really have the budget necessary in order to live alone. And if this is not within your budget, let's explore some different options for you. Option number one is get a roommate. If you're a student, actually finding a roommate is not as hard compared to if you're not a student. I know that a ton of the schools in the area, they tend to have websites set up just only for students to help them find roommates and at least you can kind of filter through a little bit more from there and know that they are verified students. If you're not a student, you can search through various social media platforms like Discord, Facebook, uh, Craigslist, and I'm pretty sure there's a lot more. Now, I highly, highly recommend screening your roommates ahead of time because you're gonna live with them for a while and you wanna feel comfortable with the person you are going to be sharing a space with. And also try your best to avoid scans by making sure that the place is legit by asking to do a phone call or actually going there physically to uh, see the place. I also feel that it's important to do some research on where you are going to be renting at just because you're going to be in that vicinity for a while and you want to feel comfortable with where you are. I will say that finding a place with a room with a private bathroom sometimes can be a little bit tough just because since Boston is a bit on the older side, a lot of the buildings that are within budget, they tend to be like three bed and one and a half bath. It's not impossible to find, but it may require adjusting your budget a little bit. The second option that you have is to consider living further from the city. Typically, the further away you live from the city, the rent tends to be a bit more manageable and it tends to be a lot less competitive to find an apartment. These are usually places that are located like at the end of the T lines and or require a commuter rail. Now, if you are a student, I would not recommend commuting further than one hour away from school if you're gonna use public transportation just because you're gonna burn out and you have to go into class at a frequentish time frame. And so I feel like an hour max is a generally a good rule. Now, if you're working in a professional you know, world and whatnot, this depends on your working conditions. If you are primarily remote or hybrid, I feel like it's fine to live further out than an hour. Now, if you have to come in all the time, I still feel like an hour, hour and a half-ish is probably the best 
distance maximum to be from the wherever you have to go just because you're going to be commuting all the time and you just don't want to burn out now another question that i tend to get is when should i start looking for apartments now september 1st is the most popular move-in date here in boston and because of that Finding an apartment is incredibly competitive for that specific move-in date. I'm talking to the point where I know someone who literally in February has solidified an apartment with a move-in date in September 1st, and that's considered early and now considered normal just because it has been really tough to and incredibly competitive to try and find an apartment just to rent lately. And so it is honestly better to start looking in advance than to be late. It tends to be where if you don't have an apartment with a September, if you're planning on moving in September 1st, if you don't have a lease ready by June, you should be very concerned. Honestly, if you don't want to deal with a lot of competition, I would highly recommend looking into an apartment during like the off peak time frames. However, just know that you won't have as much of availability to search around for compared to September 1st apartments. On top of that, finding, an, finding a moving truck in Boston during that time frame is also incredibly competitive to where a lot of the moving companies, if you do not have a reservation ready months in advance, they're going to tell you to go to New Hampshire or even Rhode Island to go pick up a truck because it is just that insane, the level of demand for a moving truck. And it's just not fun if you don't have that ready and you need that. So just keep that in mind. Now, the next question I'm going to answer is what areas slash neighborhood should I start looking for an apartment? And I actually have a video dedicated to that. Uh, you can just take a look right up above and click on that. Honestly, if you don't have a car and you're going to rely on public transit, I would not recommend living further than 15 minutes from a T station. This is just because winters can be pretty rough and walking more than 15 minutes can be an intense experience. Now, if you're going to drive, then it, it's not as applicable to you, but driving in, in a New England winter is unique. And just driving in Boston in general is very unique just because parking is expensive and just driving into town can also be um, an experience. I will say though, Having a car is very convenient for grocery runs, especially if you're gonna to go to Market Basket. Market Basket honestly is the place to go for groceries and I love it so much, but I'm sad that I don't live close enough to a Market Basket to be able to fully enjoy it. Now, the next thing I'm gonna talk about is housing scams, just because we live in a capitalist society. And if you don't know something, someone may more than likely try and take advantage of it. So don't let people walk all over you and take advantage of you, especially financially. So with that, I have a few tips on how to avoid housing scams. Now, number one, if a deal sounds too good to be true, I'm sorry, it probably is. Now, unfortunately, all housing, you know, look looking for housing platforms, whether it be social media, Craigslist, apartments.com, uh, Zillow and whatnot, they are unfortunately susceptible to scams. Say you come across a posting that says it is $1,000 a month in the heart of the city. It is at least 500 square feet and you are going to be living alone. I would call bull on that, to be quite honest. I would be incredibly nervous for that just because it just sounds too good to be true. You know, things you could do to make sure that it's legit, you can reverse image search through Google with the photos provided to make sure it's even the right address. Sometimes, you know, scammers, they'll take photos from other postings and, you know, create a random address to make sure and say that it's this address when really it's not to try and, you know, demonstrate the illu illusion that it's just this luxury place. Another, you know, other things to look for are spelling errors. If it's a lot of spelling errors, probably a bot or, you know, another form of a scammer. In addition, do research on the landlord and or whatever leasing company the apartment that you're looking at is under. 
I would say just do as much research as possible before diving in financially into a situation. It is better to be overly cautious about a new situation than to be taken advantage of because you know what? It's better to save your money. <laughs> now, number two, do not give any money whatsoever without being able to take a look at the place first. Now, obviously, the best option is to be able to look at the apartment in person. However, if you are unable to do so, I would highly recommend doing a video call with someone that is live. Do not accept recordings because those can be fabricated as well. This is the 21st century. If they are unable to do a live walkthrough of the apartment and show you, you know, the unit number, the area that it's surrounding by, the other apartments that are also nearby it, then it's just not the place for you. Now, on top of this, do not sign anything or transfer any money if you haven't even taken a look at the place just because scammers will try and use this as a way to steal money from you. And just know that in advance, looking at a place should be free. You should not be able, you should not be under any agreements whatsoever until you have decided to put money down for actual rent if they're asking for money for other purposes just get out like it's, it's just not worth it now the next thing you should do is to make sure you document everything unfortunately if you do get scammed having proper and concise documentation is going to be very helpful especially if you're going to report them they can at least you know figure out the name email address, any contact information provided to try and track this person. On top of that, it's also really important that you are very well educated on Massachusetts uh, tenant law. You know, just do a quick Google search, honestly, and it will help you so much. Now, the last thing for this is do not be too trusting. I don't think it's a bad idea to use a real estate agent or broker if you're really new and you have the financial means for it, but don't just accept that just because they're a real estate agent slash broker that they know all and that they have your best intentions, you have your best intentions at heart and you need to trust your gut with that. For one, ask for a copy of their real estate slash broker license just because you can look back, you can research it to make sure that it is a legit number and it ties to the name and identification that your person gave you. On top of that, just trust your judgment. For instance, if they're telling you, okay, include a month's rent with your application, don't listen to them. Your application should equal less definitely less than a month's rent. You don't provide a month's rent unless you have a solid lease agreement that you of what you're gonna be paying and they're asking for your renter's insurance and other forms of identification directly just because don't you don't need to give more money and information that is not needed until you have the documentation necessary. I know that was a lot of information, but I really hope that this video is a very comprehensive guide on how to probably properly find an apartment living here in Boston. This is from three years of experience, well, renting in the same apartment, but also communicating with people who've had to move often uh, for renting an apartment here in Boston. Just know that I am not a realtor, I'm not endorsing, and this video is not endorsing any leasing companies or real estate companies whatsoever. I'm just providing my you know, personal experience and input on how to best help you with your goal of finding an apartment. If you have any further questions or concerns, leave it in the comments below. And with that, I wish you all a very good night.